Welcome back everybody. Got a quick little bonus video for you here. I got sent out this cool little engine model and I'm going to put it together for you here in this video. A quick little shout out to where I got this. This was sent out to me by this website or the owners of the product itself. Uh, the website is called um, Moyu Store, I believe. I think that's how it's pronounced. But anyway, I'm just going to give you the disclosure here. That's what it looks like and uh, that's the price of the product now i know there's a lot of other websites like this that sell this product and some of them are scammers and trust me i've even fallen for that too but the fact that they sent it out to me and get to put it together and they had trust in me so that's why i'm putting it out there for you so i think it's legitimate there's two versions of them one is motorized as in like you it will actually spin i think that's the one i got anyway let's go back to the build first we unpack the whole thing i got my little fur babies running around over there they're my little assistants and the interesting part is that they advertise this as a Trent 900 turbofan engine. Yes, it does look kind of similar, but it's far from it. It's not really accurate to what the real Trent 900 is. Then again, you're asking an aircraft mechanic. So yeah, of course I'm going to nitpick. But overall, the, the engine itself, the model, the 3D printed model is very nice. And I apologize, I have to do this on the floor because I don't have a workshop, I don't have a good table to work on, so might as well just put it on the floor. And trust me, my back is killing me, I'm paying for it today. It took me almost four and a half hours to put this thing together. I could probably put a real engine up and down from a wing of an aircraft with a good crew within that time frame. <laughs> but anyway, let's keep going. The kit comes with pretty much almost everything you need. Uh, it comes with obviously all the cabling and all the parts and also two Allen wrenches. But you are still going to need some extra tooling. Something to cut with, maybe a file, and definitely some super glue. The kit comes with a QR code right there. Just scan it and then you will get the instructions right there. I pulled it up on my tablet so I can have it right next to me and I can just read as I put it together. I'll be honest with you, not the very best type of instructions or instructional manual on how to put the model together, but you're going to have to improvise and just, I don't know, you'll, you'll wing it. So, some portions you're going to have to wing it and you'll figure it out. If you're anything like me and you like to tinker and look around and say, hey, maybe this can go first or this can go last. Yeah. And remember, it's a model, not a real aircraft engine. This, are, this isn't a real aircraft maintenance manual. So go ahead and improvise and you'll, you'll figure it out. The manual they give you kind of like points you in the right direction saying here this is how you should do it but you can again play around with it improvise and do what you got to do i'm using my leatherman and some tweezers oh yeah that's the other thing i forgot to mention i have a pair of tweezers that'll come in handy One cool thing I did enjoy is how they labeled it. Look, if you look real close, it'll tell you the direction to, to install the majority of the components and numbering. So that's very helpful. Those are some of the compressor blades right there. These are the stator vanes, and we'll cut those things out, those uh, bars in the middle. But once again, nicely labeled. And just to give you a heads up, this is not an easy model to build. This is actually pretty challenging. Lots of small, delicate parts. So, you know, be mindful when you're doing this. Don't be like me and break off uh, compressor blades. You'll see that later on. So let's begin the assembly of the compressor section first. Oh, interesting fact for you. If you guys didn't know, uh, actual engines, real live engines actually get built vertically. They stack the blades on top of each other. They get to a certain level or a certain portion of the job of building the engine, then they will turn it horizontal. It's quite incredible to watch it. I've been in engine shops and I've seen it done myself, so it's really, really cool to see that. There's such intricate design that's built into the engine that most of us within the aviation community, community or the maintenance community would never even get to see it. This is where I get to use my Leatherman. I'm gonna cut those little bars off and then just shave down whatever was left with the knife. Don't worry, those portions are not visible where I'm shaving off. So a little bit of paint will come off. Don't worry about that.
At this point, I started stacking the stator vanes up against the compressor section, but I realized that's not really going to work. I need the case. So you'll see me later on pick this up and then remove all this once again and install it back into the case. All the hardware comes with the kit and they give you more than enough. Even if you lose a few pieces here and there, they give you plenty of hardware. Lots of fasteners, all sorts of fun stuff. So don't worry. If you do lose some, don't worry. You got plenty of reserve. Did you catch a glimpse of my supervisor over there? Making sure I'm doing the job right for AMM? Okay, we got the compressor section built up or the high pressure compressor built up. And that lower disc is, I'm assuming that's the high pressure turbine. Once again, the model is not exact. It's just a replica, it, but it's a nice representation. It's a good example. And you can see me fumbling all over the place. But anyway, let's keep on going. Okay, we got all that installed. The compressor section is good to go. Now let's go work on the turbine section. Now I've talked about how an engine works or an aircraft engine. In this case, this is a high bypass turbofan. In a sense, it's much like any other internal combustion engine. Intake, compression, spark, fuel, exhaust. The only difference within a turbine engine is that it's a continuous burn. Once you've ignited that flame, it stays alive because you keep feeding fuel to it. This is why aircraft engines use igniter plugs, not spark plugs. Once the sequence of events have occurred, now you got a continuous burn and the engine is turning, now you get propulsion. You have to remember, engines or aircraft engines run mostly on two shaft configuration. Rolls-Royce does it on a three shaft configuration, but that's a conversation for something else. So let's talk about the two shaft configuration. High pressure, and low pressure. The compressor section that you saw me build earlier, that's the high pressure. The high pressure turbine runs the high pressure compressor. The low pressure turbine, the one I'm installing right now, or the one I was playing with earlier, runs the fan or the low pressure compressor. And in most modern cases in big modern engine, they call them the booster stage. It becomes a perpetual motion. One shaft runs the other. Combine that with proper fuel flow, proper compression within the compressor section, utilizing various amounts of valves and variable stator vanes, get optimal use out of that engine. Again, I'm just dumbing it down. I'm making it very simple. But in essence, that's how a turbine engine runs. One shaft powers the other, and there's two shafts usually. And when you got a continuous burn, then there you go. You have a self-sustaining engine. Or you can just go the easy route and say, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. There you go. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, now it's time to put the fan together. This was a little bit difficult because it's a very tight squeeze in there, but I managed to do it with all my butterfingers there. I kept dropping screws left and right. Oh my goodness, I was getting so frustrated. Halfway through, I realized that the kit actually comes with a uh, assistant tool. They actually 3D printed uh, nut holders, and I didn't realize that until like two hours into the project. At this point, I'm assembling the fan case area or the area where the stator vanes are right aft of the fan blades. And in case you didn't know, 80 to 85% of thrust or power comes from the high bypass, the fan. It's finally starting to look like an engine, isn't it? There's that little 3D printed tool I was talking about. Yeah, it was there the whole time. I could have been using it.
Okay, now it's time to combine the compressor section with the turbine section. There's also a shaft internally with a little bit of a gear that's gonna run the whole thing because remember, this is the type of engine that's gonna spin. It comes with a little motor and you'll see it at the end. It's kind of cool. All put together, now we put the fan in there with the shaft and it spun just fine. No obstructions, no problems. Now we put the casing on top. This is the shroud that's surrounding the fan. And a fun little fact for you, majority of modern engines, that shroud is actually made out of Kevlar. And in some cases, a combination of Kevlar and carbon fiber. They do this just in case one of those fan blades do let go, the casing will catch it. The interesting thing about this, uh, it's opposing blade turn. I don't know why they built it. I guess it looks cool, aesthetically pleasing. When you turn the fan, the compressor section turns in the opposite direction. In reality, it's not like that. They all turn in the same direction. Only two engines that I know of that have that technology is the GENX and the Pratt Whitney 1100. Rolls-Royce does not implement that technology. Matter of fact, going back to what I was saying earlier, how, you know, it's not really a Trent 900, Trents or the Rolls-Royce family are very indicative of having a triple spool engine. That means you have three shafts. But once again, don't judge that by the, for that model. It's just a model. It still looks pretty cool. Time to install the motor and that goes all the way in the exhaust and that attaches itself to the center shaft of the fan. Uh-oh, I got wiring. I need avionics. Avionics, where are you? I'm just joking. After all that, we install the cookie cutter or uh, the diffuser. This is basically responsible for blending the airflow from the high bypass and uh, the hot section, as well as noise reduction. We're coming to the end of the build here. We're almost done. Just installing the final touches here and this is part of the motor assembly, just some of the wiring right here. I am convinced that one of the cats stole one of the fuel nozzles or an LPT blade. I can't remember, but here you go. Fully functioning and it's running. And yeah, I know it's spinning backwards. I have no idea. I must have done something wrong, but hey, it looks pretty. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's a lovely model. It was a, definitely a good challenge to put it together. I'll leave all the information and details in the description. There are a few other creators that got sent this model out. I'm one of them and there's a promo code attached to it, but I never really registered for it because I really don't do this kind of stuff. I just enjoy the model and I want to say thank you to the company. But if you do want to go support the other creators, I'm going to give you a promo code from Zeto. My good friend Zeto or Tomas, you might know him. He's got a promo code. It'll give you a quick little discount, save you some money on this thing. Also, if you got a chance, go check out his YouTube channel or his Instagram channel. He's an amazing aircraft technician, great content creator, very smart guy. Once again, I'll leave all the information right down below. Go ahead and read it, figure it out. If you want to buy it, buy it. If you don't, then don't. Then just enjoy the video. That's about it. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you on the next adventure. Later.